Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing today? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Come on in the room, come on in the room. Come on in the room. Give Facebook a chance to do its thing and share the broadcast out, build an audience. Go ahead and share, share, share. I am Sabrina Beast, affectionately known as Lady Dix. I jump on every Sunday with a Bible lesson or message, um, something that I pray will uh, bless your life and help you on your journey. So go ahead and share, 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 share this Bible study. Jump on, jump on and share, share, share. I jump on every Sunday at nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Jump on and share, share, share this Bible study. How's everybody doing today on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning? I'm going to go ahead and start off, start, 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 start us off with the word of prayer. Oh, I don't know where my glasses are. Oh, well. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that this lesson will be a blessing to someone on this morning, Father, uh, that uh, their, their faith would be strengthened. Uh, they would be encouraged to run on and see what the end will be. But most of all, that someone would uh, hear this lesson and say, what must I do to be saved or to rededicate my life to you? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for jumping on to this Bible study. Today, I want to just talk to you about what are you saying to yourself? What are you talking about? What are you speaking about? What are you declaring? What are you confessing? What is, um, what is your daily confession or what is your lifestyle confession? Some, some of us have, it's just a lifestyle. We've developed this lifestyle and what we speak out of, out of our mouth is generally negative or um, not positive or complaining or um, talking about people, gossiping. What are you talking about? That's what this teaching is going to be about today. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you saying? I believe that there are many good things happening in the world right now, probably more good than bad. We know that the news media, they're always going to talk about the bad more so than the good. And I'm not trying to say that uh, with COVID, we, we lost a half a million people. Um, a lot of people lost their jobs. Lots of people lost their homes. So I'm not trying to say in any shape, form, or fashion that that was good news. We did have all of that to happen. But what I noticed is that the news outlets very rarely told us about people who caught the coronavirus and lived caught the coronavirus and they were okay afterwards. We, we just always hear about the negative. The news very rarely shows positive things that are happening in the community. They're always showing the negative, the killings and all that. But there's so much good that is really happening in this land, but we don't hear about that. The evil is always magnified in a way that often seems overwhelming. I personally do not watch the news. I say this all the time. And people are like, well, you don't watch the news? No, I do not. And I have um, a good friend of mine. She tells me, Sabrina, you need to watch the news, girl. It's how, how you'll know what's going on. And I don't need to watch the news. I tell her all the time, I don't need to watch the news because I know you're watching the news. And I know you're going to tell me everything that's going on. And my husband watches the news. So he tells me anything I need to know. So anything I need to know, I feel like the two of them will tell me. The only thing that I do do is I will cut the uh, news on to see the weather. But once I hear the weather, I, I don't, I have no desire 
to hear what is going on in the world because all they're talking about is negativity. I do watch CNN very rarely. I watched it more uh, throughout this pandemic uh, just to be informed and just to, because my husband is very, very into um, news and, and um, all that kind of stuff. He's just like really, really wants to be in the know. He needs to know as pastor, as um, a father. He just feels like I need to know what's going on so that I can be prepared or, you know, whatever. So sometimes I will watch with him. But for the most part, I have no desire to watch that. But the evil is magnified in a way that often seems overwhelming to most, especially me. It's overwhelming to continue to see people getting killed, people dying. If you turn on any news station or buy any newspaper, you will find it filled with reports of murder, theft, um, all these horrible, tragic events. We want to be well informed, of course. We need to know what's going on, but to talk about the problems excessively or with no purpose merely creates a gloomy atmosphere that nobody will enjoy. The more you watch that um, news and all that kind of stuff, it just brings your spirit down. It's, um, it could be depressing. You can just be saddened by it. I, I just, um, I recently, I was just talking to somebody the other day about all these killings and, and all these people still dying. One year later, people are still dying and on ventilators. It, it, it's that you can't feel happy about that kind of stuff. It, it just brings you down. But we know that God is still in control. So with that, of course, we're going to have some joy. We'll uh, have some happiness because of that. But watching that, it brings you down. I'm not suggesting that all in any way that we deny reality. We know what's really going on. We know that people are losing their lives. We know people are homeless. We know people are dying. But we can choose what we talk about. Instead of feeding ourselves a steady diet of bad news, we could choose to read and watch and talk about good things. What about talking about some positive happening, something good going on? That's what we should be doing. What are you talking about? What are you saying? We talk a lot and quite often pay no attention to what we're saying. Sometimes we just talk without even thinking, just blah, 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 just talking, talking, talking. You don't even know what you're talking about half the time. Just want to just talk, 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 or you don't even think about what you're saying until you said something and you put your foot in your mouth. Let alone, we don't think about what we say, let alone the impact that it, it has on people. And oftentimes the impact it has on us. If we are honest with ourselves, we may find that some of our bad moods are directly linked to our conversations. Even some of our problems can be linked to bad choices we make about what we say. Sometimes you're feeling down and depressed. Well, what have you been speaking out of your mouth? What have you been saying? All of that, it will bring you down. You could speak life and death. The scriptures tell us life and death, that tongue. It's in that tongue. We have so much power in our words, so much power in our mouths, but we don't choose to use the power in the right way. We're using the power to speak things that aren't always good for us. I want to encourage you to take some time and think about the types of things that you usually talk about. Just think about it. Then just think about the last conversation you had. Was it positive? Was it negative? Was it gossip? What was, was it edifying? Did you edify somebody in your words or were you bringing somebody down in your word? What kind of conversation do you enjoy to participate in? I personally enjoy positive conversations. Not to say that realistically, I don't know why people think that because I'm of a positive, more of a positive nature, which is a choice that I choose to make, that I don't have problems. I have a lot of problems. A lot of issues, lots of stuff going on, but I don't choose to talk about it. I choose to talk about the goodness of the Lord. I, ch I choose to talk about the positive that's going on in my life. I don't want to continue to talk about the negative. What am I talking about that for? What benefit is it? What is it? What's the benefit of it? There is none. None. The more you talk about the negative, the negative, the negative, you just feel worse. The situation doesn't go away. So why keep talking about? The negative, what are you talking about? What kind of conversation do you enjoy talking about and participating in? Do you like just gossiping all the time, talking about people? 
Some people really enjoy talking about people. What kind of conversation do you enjoy participating in? Talking negative? Yep, you right. You're on your job? Yep, this job is horrible. Yep, we ain't making no money. Yep, our boss is terrible. Yep. What are you talking about? Are you talking about, I'm grateful that I have a job? What are the type of conversations? Just think about it. These are the things that we don't think about. We just, uh, just talk, 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 talk. And you don't even think about what you're talking about. Your words may not be the cause of all of your problems, but they can cause a lot of them and they should be given a good deal of consideration when we are looking for answers to the problems we encounter in life. We all have challenges in life. Nobody's life is perfect. None of our life is perfect. I have problems just like you have problems. Don't think I'm exempt. I'm not exempt just like you're not exempt. We all have problems. We all have challenges, but we can make them better or worse by the way we talk about them. I don't believe we can change all of our circumstances into pleasant ones just by making positive confessions. I can't just, boom, make everything great, all my problems go away because I want to talk positive or because I want to be a positive person. Not saying it at all. It's not going away just because I'm going to talk it away. Oh, it's good. No, doesn't work like that. Just don't get confused. That's not what I'm saying. But I do believe many of our problems and situations will change according to God's will. God's will will be done. It's going to be done regardless. There's nothing we can do about a lot of the problems and situations because sometimes we're going through a test. God is testing us. We know the scriptures tell us that the test and trials, they come to make us strong. We know that all things are working together for our good. It doesn't always feel good, but it's working for our good. But while we're going through it, what are you saying? That's what what are you talking about? That's all I want you to think about today. What are you talking about when you're going through the test and the trials? Are you focusing on the test? Are you constantly talking negative about what's going on? That's what I want you to think about. I simply want us to understand. We have to be in agreement with God and learn to say what he says about the situation. That's all I want you to understand today. What are you talking about? What are you saying? What are the conversations that's going on behind closed door doors and on the phone? <coughs> on the phone, when you're on the phone, what are the conversations that only you and the person is on the phone? You're really the only two that know and hear it, but God hears the conversation. What are the conversations that you have going on that you think, Mm, nobody know about this but me and you girl girl you know yep i'm just saying god hears he knows all what are you talking about i want to leave you um with some confessions some scriptures some declarations however you want to call it i want you to uh, write these scriptures down you might have to go back and watch the replay to actually um catch all of these I want to give you some scriptures. Second Corinthians 5 and 17 says, I am a new create, a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Are you still talking about the old you? Are you still talking about stuff that happened in 1975? Why? Why are you still talking about that? You are a new creature. We are a new creation. In Christ, if we've given our, our life over to the Lord, we're new. He made us brand new. The old stuff, that's gone. It's over. Behold, all things are new. What are you talking about? Stop talking about that old stuff. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6 says, I have died and have been raised with Christ and, and now seated in heavenly places. I'm, I'm, I'm new. I, I'm, I'm new. Romans 6 and 11 says, I am dead to sin and alive unto righteousness. Isaiah 54 and 17 says, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper, but every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I shall show to be in the wrong. Or 
the King James Version will say, he will, con he will condemn. You ain't got to worry about people talking about you. I don't worry about people talking about me. I know the weapons are going to form. It's going to be darts. It's going to be things that are going to come up. It's going to be opposition. There's going to be tests and trials. There's going to be haters. There's going to be people talking about you. I don't worry about that because the scripture tells me that every tongue that rises up against me, he will he gonna take care of it. I don't have to worry about it. So what am I talking about? Am I talking about them talking about me? I don't care because the scripture tells me. It tells me every tongue, every tongue that rises up against me. That's Isaiah 54 and 17. Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, I prosper in everything I put my hand to. I have prosperity in all areas of my life, spiritually, financially, mentally, and socially. That's my, that would be my confession. Because we know Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us he knows the plans for me. He know he already has it established. But these are some confessions that I'm giving you that you can start saying to yourself is when you want to talk negative. So when I'm reading these, it might not be the scripture. This is what I want you to say. What are you talking about? I take every thought captive unto the obedience of Jesus Christ, casting down every imagination, and every high thought that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. That is 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. When those crazy thoughts come in my head, no, no. I got to bring those thoughts under captivity. I got to grab them thoughts and say, oh, no, 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 no. That negative thinking, no. No, Satan, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to have me discouraged and depressed. No, 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 no. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Therefore, all my thoughts are positive. I do not allow Satan to use my spirit to dump that negativity, negative things that he offers me. I don't allow him to dump that negativity. I don't allow him to... Um, I don't, I'm not going to accept those negative thoughts that he's trying to dump into my mind. Proverbs 23 and 7. I don't speak negative things. Ephesians 4, 29. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. I will speak forth the righteousness of God all the day long. Read Psalms 173. No, read Psalms 17, 3. And Psalms 35, 28. I never bind a sister or brother with the words of my mouth. Matthew 18, 18. I am always a positive encouragement. I edify and build up. I never tear down or destroy. Romans 15, 2. Mark 5, 36. I am a believer, not a doubter. This is, these are confessions. These are things that I want you to say to yourself when the devil comes in and he's coming in. We know the scripture tells us he's coming in like a flood. He's coming for you. So when he comes in with this negativity, I'm giving you some confessions. What are you talking about? What are you saying? I'm giving you some scriptures and I'm giving you some confessions that you can use to speak over and declare over your life. I am slow to speak, quick to hear, and slow to anger. James 1, 19. I am a doer of the word. I meditate on the word all the day long. Do you meditate on the word day and night? Do you read the scriptures? You got the Bible. Most people are using the cell phones now. But do when you read the word, do you sit there and meditate? Sometimes you have to sit there and just, what, what, did, what was that word saying to me? What are you trying to say to me through this, uh, this chapter? What are you saying to me? You have to meditate on the word, digest it. Day and night, read James 1, 22 and Psalms 1, 2. I will study the word of God. I will pray. We have to study the word of God and you have to pray. There's no way around it. A lot of this stuff that's coming out of your mouth is coming out of your mouth because you're not staying connected to the power source, which is Jesus Christ. We're not staying connected. So that's why we're saying what the word, we're, we're speaking what the world is saying. You're talking like the world, acting like the world, looking like the world. You don't know what to say and do because you're not in the word. You're not praying and communicating with God. 
2 Timothy 2.15, Luke 18 and 1. I never get tired or grow weary when I study the word, pray, or praise God. But I am alert and full of energy. And as I study, I become more alert and more energized. Read 2 Thessalonians 3.13 and Isaiah 40.31. I am a giver. It is more blessed to give than to receive. I love to give. I have plenty of money to give away all the time. These are confessions and declarations that you can say and speak up your life. So let me stop here. For those of you who don't even know what is a confession or declaration, or what, what am I saying? What, what is it about? It might be uh, back in my um, grandmother's day, back when uh, I was growing up. People really didn't talk about confessions and affirmations. You might have heard affirmations, uh, declarations. They didn't talk about that, you know, as I was growing up. So to some of you, you might be saying, what is this? Declarations and confessions and affirmations, you're just saying the positive things. It is to affirm what you want to see happen in your life versus talking about the negative. Yep, my grandmama was poor. My daddy was poor. We all going to be poor. But daddy was a drunk, so you know, I was, I, I'm just meant to be a drunk. My mama died of cancer, so I'm going to die of cancer. You know, it's just, it's, it's a hereditary. They have all had diabetes, so I'm going to have diabetes. What are you talking about? What are you saying? It doesn't have to be so. The word of God is right here. We don't have to say, I, I, they all say, watching the news is telling us, Anxiety is on the rise. Everybody is on anxiety medicine. Depression is on the rise. Everybody has depression. So that means I'm going to have depression. No, I don't have to have it because that's what the news says. I can confess what the scriptures have to say. I can add my own affirmation or my own declaration to it, or I can confess verbatim what the scripture says. So that is what I'm saying when I'm saying uh, these are confessions and declarations that you can say and speak over your life instead of talking the negative, all right? So uh, that was Acts 20, 35, 2 Corinthians 9, 7, and 8. 1 Peter 5 and 7, I cast all my care on the Lord. Why? He cares for me. He cares for me. So I don't have to carry all this on my, on my back, all this pressure on my back. I could cast that care on him, just tell him, God, this is what's going on because I, I know you care about me. When, when you might feel like nobody else care about you, he cares. So I could cast it all over to him. I don't even have to worry about it. I don't have a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1 and 7. 1 John 4, 18 and Romans 8 and 1. I do not fear. I am not guilty. Proverbs 27, 23. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16. I am not passive about anything, but I deal with all things in my life immediately. I do not judge my brothers and sisters in Christ. I am a spiritual woman or man, and I am judged by no one. John 8, 15, Romans 14, 10, and 1 Corinthians 2, 15. I operate in all the gifts of the spirit, which are tongues, <clears throat> working of miracles, discerning of spirits, the word of faith, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, healing, and prophecy. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. I walk in the spirit at all times. Galatians 5, 16. I've been set free. I am free to love, worship, to trust with no fear of rejection or being hurt. John 8, 36, Romans 8 and 1. I have compassion and understanding for all people. 1 Peter 3 and 8. I do not hate or walk in unforgiveness. 1 John 2, 11 and Ephesians 4, 32. These are things that you want to say. You might be feeling in your heart that somebody did you wrong. I want to get them back. Um, somebody hurt me in a bad way. No, no, I don't walk in unforgiveness. I don't hate anyone. But you got the scripture. Sometimes you need that scripture to help you get through some things because in the flesh and in the mind and the natural, oh, I just really want to, oh, you hurt me so bad. I just cannot forgive you. 
That's why you have to confess the word. I catch the enemy and all his deceitful lies. I cast them down and choose rather to believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I, I cancel out what you're saying, Satan. John 8, 44 and 2 Corinthians 2, 11 and 10 and 5. I do all my work excellently and with great prudence, making the most of all my time. When I work, when I do anything, I like to do it with a spirit of excellence. A lot of people say, oh, you're just a perfectionist. I know you just like to do everything perfect. You just like to be perfect. No, I don't want to be perfect. I know I can't be perfect. Jesus, God is perfect, not me, but I want to have a spirit of excellence. I want to give God my best. When I was out there in the world, going to the club, I want to look my best. I want to put my, I want to learn all the dance steps, the moves, like everybody else. I want to be excellent in that thing. So why is it when we come to church or come to worshiping God or or um, serving the Lord, we don't want to be excellent then. It's not even important. No, no. That's Ecclesiastes 9, 10, Proverbs 22 and 29, Ephesians 5, 15 and 16. I am creative because the Holy Spirit lives in me. John 14, 26, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. I take good care of my body. I eat right. I look good. I feel good. And I weigh what God wants me to weigh. 1 Corinthians 9, 27 and 1 Timothy 4 and 8. What are you talking about? What are you saying? Are you just saying is this, is, it is what it is? I, I just. I, I, I can't get no healthier. I'm not, I don't even know. I'm not even going to try. I'm still keep on eating this pig, eating neck bones and all this stuff that I know is not good for me, even though they already told me I have diabetes or I'm borderline diabetic or I, um, I'm obese or um, my blood pressure is up. But you're going to just keep eating or you're going to just keep talking. Well, that's the doctor said. Ain't nothing we can do. No, no. We, the word of God tells us we can do something different. 1 Corinthians 9, 27, 1 Timothy 4 and 8. Pain cannot successfully come against my body because Jesus bore all my pain. Isaiah 53, 3 and 4. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. Mark 16 and 18. I have a teachable spirit. 2 Timothy 2 and 24. I do not think more highly of myself than I ought to in the flesh. Romans 12 and 3. I have humbled myself and God has exalted me. That's 1 Peter 5 and 6. I do what I say I will do and I get where I am going on time. Do we do what we say? A lot of times we say we're going to do something and we don't do it. It used to be a thing. My word is bond. Now my, your word is nothing. You say something and then you don't even come through. You don't do what you say you're going to do. And then always late, always late, always late. Luke 16, 10 and 2 Peter 3 and 14. I am an obedient wife and no rebellion operates in me. Ephesians 5, 22 and 24 and 1 Samuel 15 and 23. My husband is wise. He is the king and the priest of our home. He makes godly decisions. Proverbs 31, 10 through 12, and Revelations 1, the sixth verse, Proverbs 21 and 1. Stop talking about your husband saying your husband it gets on your nerves. He don't do nothing. He's so lazy. He make me sad. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. Confess something different. Start declaring something different. Stop being rebellious. Stop operating your own. Listen to your husband. Listen, listen, I am an obedient wife. That doesn't mean you're not going to control me. You ain't telling me what to do. No, no. Get in alignment with what the word of God says. Ephesians 5, 22 and 24. Proverbs 31, 10 through 12. Revelations 1 and 6. Proverbs 21 and 1. All my children have lots of Christian friends and God has set aside a Christian wife or husband for each of them. What are you saying? What are you talking about? Get in alignment with the word. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. My children love to pray and study the word. They openly and boldly praise God. Now, in the natural, they might not be doing that. But what are you saying? Start confessing and declaring the word of God. That's 2 Timothy 2 
and 15. My children make right choices according to the word of God. Your children might not be making the right decisions right now. They might be living outside of God's will. But what are you saying? Are you just saying that, talking a negative, speaking a negative, that death over your children? Are you speaking the word of God? What are you talking about? What are you saying? That's Psalms 119. Uh, 130. I don't know if I got that right. Let me check that. Let me see. Isaiah 54 and 13. All my household are blessed in their deeds. We're blessed when we come in and we, we're blessed when we go out. That's Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and the sixth verse. All that I own is paid for. I owe no man anything except to love him in Christ. Romans 13 and eight. Are you talking debt free? Are you talking debt freedom? Are you talking uh, debt over your family? Are you talking debt over your life? Let me see what this scripture is supposed to be. I want to make sure I got the right scripture before I jump. Oh, this is my last one. Yes, 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 yes. One third. The interest of your words is like it is understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and panic for I long for your commandments. Look upon me and be merciful to me as your custom towards those who love your name. Okay, so um, that that's all I want to jump on today and talk about is what are you talking about? What are you saying? What are you declaring? What are you confessing over your life, over your family? What are you talking about? What are you saying? Go back, look up those, some of those scriptures that I gave you and start confessing the word of God over your life. Stop talking negative. Stop talking about people. Stop gossiping. Stop speaking negative over the situation. You might've gotten a bad report from the doctor. Don't continue to confess what the doctor is saying. Dr. Jesus has the last say. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just come to you asking you, Father, to bless this uh, message. I pray that something was said today that uh, helps someone, encourage someone. But most of all, that someone will reach out and say, what must I do to be saved? In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me. I am Sabrina Dix, officially known as Lady Dix. <clears throat> Thank you for jumping on to this Bible study. If you're watching this Bible study and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ in the free part of your sin, please reach out to me. I would love to give you the plan of salvation and welcome you into the kingdom. Thank you so much for watching. Please share and I'll see you on next Sunday. Just think about it. What are you talking about? What are you saying? God bless.